Okay, ladies and gents, busy year beckons. Um, tens of thousands of SME staging this year, and the spikes, the, the, the acute staging spikes, uh, March, which is, that's a ticked clock, so now we can do nothing for people staging in March, it's too late. Um, but August and October, huge staging spikes, those employers coming in, in, in those areas can access professional help with their work on all the planning. Um, an overriding theme that we're talking to a lot of employers, and they're all saying, it's okay, my accountant is dealing with it. Sometimes they say, it's okay, mate, our accountant is dealing with it. Um, but they're, I'm, I'm, what we said, now initially they're saying, okay, that's fine then, goodbye. But since then, saying, well, actually, is your accountant aware that you're thinking that? <laughs> you're you're like nodding your heads and smiling. Um, because what are they assuming that you're doing about their problem? This isn't your problem, is it? So what are they assuming that you're doing about their problem? They're just quietly thinking that you're going to get on with it, and then all of a sudden, one month from staging, a letter from TPR turns up, and they say, oh, crack out. hello there, this pension thing, have you got it all sorted out for me? No, that's not what we do. Why are you thinking that we're doing that for you? To be a relationship damaging conversation. So, never assume, it's the old adage, isn't it? Um, so, just to recap on the the detail on the staging, March and April, if the phone rings today with an April stager, I'm probably going to say no. I'd like to say yes, but practicality is just going to be too tight on time. Um, August and October, we'd like to try and get in about five, four or five months out from staging, means that we've got a reasonably comfortable transition into it. Um, the, um, so August and October, fine to help those, those employers. Absolutely fine. Um, the only chance for an April stage is we use a three month deferment. Um, do have to get that one done, but uh, it's a bit late. But these guys are okay. Have most of you guys got employees in these sort of numbers? Got, em yeah, got companies with these sort of people on strength? Most of you are saying yes. Um, so, what, what, we've been, what we've been advising accountants to do is, you may already be doing it, is send out emails. Say, look guys, Mr. Employer, please be aware, this is coming your way, you need to be prepared for it. Or, or words to that effect. I've got an email format, I can email out to you, that would be useful. Okay, just say, look guys, you need to do this, we're not doing it for you. So you're clearly telling them, warning them, they need to get, get it done. So they, 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 they can't come back and say, ah, you never told me this? Yeah, I did. So you three emails, six, six months out, three months out, and a month out. Okay, so you, you're covering yourself, as it were. Um, we were speaking with me, ladies, when you first came in about the penalties. Um, I've just highlighted the one, you can see the scale there, um, 5 to 49 employees, £500 per day. Now for small employers, that's going to be pretty ruinous. Three, £3,500 a week. Pretty ruinous. This, this would be for people who are really trying to get away with it. If they're a bit, if they're not, if they're a bit sloppy, not very efficient, and there was some, there's some mitigation, this might not apply, but... It's a matter of taking the risk. Do you want to take the risk, Mr. Employer, and get fined at this level? Staggering. Okay, employer concerns. Um, cost, cost, and cost. Initial costs, and then, oh, I've got to pay into this thing as well. Yeah, you have. Only 1% initially, um, but then contribution levels are going to go up. As you know. Do you all know that contribution levels will increase? Yeah, shouldn't be something. Um, Many assume, brackets, wrongly, that it will cost the earth. Not necessarily. There is going to be a cost implication in most cases, but there are ways of taking the sting out of it. Um, so, as an employer, how do, how do I provide information to my employees? What form does that information take? Um, how to deal with the pension regulator, TPR? How to handle employees' questions? There will be questions. People say, oh, what if? Don't they? Um, then deciding on the scheme, there's some options to choose from. Which one should we go with? Um, providing employees with advice. Do we have to provide them with advice? Or do we not? Um, risk of litigation if, if it doesn't turn out very well. We live in a litigious society. Don't we? we want to sue one another. Um, so they're, they're seeing it as a bit... Are you finding this yourself? I put the word burden here. Uh, because most employers are, view it as a very large, heavy anvil landing in the middle of their desk with a crash. You finding that? Um, it's, there we go. There's the line. It's okay. My accountant will sort it. 
please get off the phone. Don't bother me. My accountant's going to fix it. Blank. Um, so, an awful lot of that. So, we're saying to employees, look, it's okay to shout for help, just don't leave it too late. <coughs> don't assume, just shout. Say, look, can somebody come talk to me about this? So, here's a typical employee, looks like a reasonable chap, doesn't he? Looks like an approachable sort of fella. And he's well turned out, three piece suit. Um, so, here we go again, cost. First thing, cost. How much is it going to cost me? There's an initial cost. Depending on what service the employer wants, there could be an ongoing cost or not, depending on what level of service they want going forward. Um, at the time, we look at the stagings. How long have I got? I've got 10 employees. How, much, how long have I got? So we're to, for 30s and below, PAYE reference codes dictate the staging date. Um, options. Yeah, you've got four options, Mr. Employer, largely. Key criteria. Employees age 22 or above on 10,000 or above will automatically be enrolled. Whether they want to be enrolled or not, they will be enrolled. They can opt out. Usually about 5% is the opt-out rate as a guide. Some employers have seen worse opt-out rates, some better. It depends on the level of employee engagement. And we spoke about yesterday, and we were talking about how it's presented. So, just go, just imagine for me a minute, okay, that you're all my employees, and I'm your boss. I'm a very reasonable boss, by the way, okay? So, I, this is what I say, guys, this pension thing, you've seen the adverts on TV, haven't you? See the advert? See what you're saying, I mean? Well, I, um, so, guys, this pension thing that the government say we have to do, well, we, it's going to start next month, okay? Um, I can't think of the name of it for the minute, but there's a pension coming in. We're going to take one percent off your salary for it, okay? Because we have to do that. And that's what we're going to do. It's going to start next month, okay? Thank you. Go back, back to work, please. Okay. Now, if something's delivered like that, how much value are you going to give to that? I would say little. Would you agree? So, <clears throat> if it's done this way, say, look, guys, you see the evidence on TV. You've probably been aware of the press coverage on it. Pension compulsion is coming. We, as an employer, have to engage with it. Okay. Now, what that, so we've looked at it, we've pondered on it, and this is what we've done. We're going to, we've looked at some professional advice, and we're going to outsource the, the, that advice and get somebody in to sort this out for us. So what's going to happen is, you will all attend a presentation. There's going to be a, a pension provided by Scottish Widows for you all. Um, we're going to be paying contributions in. You have to pay contributions too. Okay, but we'll be paying into it for you. And we're going to get somebody to come and talk to you initially, and then you all get a chance to answer questions on a one-to-one -one basis. Okay, it's, a, it's, a, it's, some, it's an employee benefit that we're rolling out and it's going to start next month. It's a wholly different way of presenting it, isn't it? So, hopefully, employees will feel far more engaged with the second version than the first. They will, they just will. A, because it's, it's an entity they understand. Scottish Widows have been around since 1815, so they understand, know that name. Um, so, in, engaging with employees is a... Ooh, wrong way, keyboard. Um, contributions up to 1% for now, but as we know, they're going to increase. There are some ongoing reporting obligations. Now, some of the, some of the, um, the master trusts are, will provide some middleware for that, but of course they charge for it. The, a lot of the payroll bureaus are charging for an interfacing piece of uh, electronicry that will help with this. But is the employer's obligation to, to, to be met? Where to find advice? There's not all uh, financial consultancy practices are engaging in auto enrolment. I don't know what the stats are, but some are definitely just saying, no, we're not, we're not doing it, not offering it. Um, okay, some, some must and must nots. Um, oh, wait, this is the Pensions Act 2008. I don't know if anyone suffers from insomnia. Okay. You can sign out from the library. I defy you to get past the bottom of the second page. It's a bit thicker than one page. Uh, we know someone who's actually printed it off, and I think it's about seven. Yes, yeah, it's like, yeah. Speaking of the pensions minister, several employers want to do any help with this, it's fine. Yeah, that's right. But it is a bit that thick. It's, it's yeah. a crazy document, really. So, but of course, it's always going to be as government, government speaks, government legislation, isn't it? So, some, some must and must not. So, enroll job holders, provide information to employees, register a scheme with TPR, the pension regulator, um, process opt outs and refunds. Make contributions 100% now, 3% by 2018, and the total contribution going in, employer and employee, has to be 8% by October of 2018. So broadly, the employer has to do three minimum by 18. So the employer will say, okay, I'll have to do my three, I'll do my three. And the employee will have to do four and 1% from tax relief to make eight. 
That would largely be what we think most employers will do. I mean, some employers might say no, we'll be in the middle, depending on their attitude to it. Um, needs just one eligible employee. So Bob the Builder and his sidekick, Pete. Bob's going to have to put a pension scheme on for Pete. Imagine how thrilled he's going to be with that. Um, so, so must not discourage membership. Give job holders the opt-out form. You're not, they're not allowed to keep opt-out forms in the office. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and in practice, most people will just use the online. Will just opt out online. Most people will um, encourage or coerce opt-outs. So it's interesting, isn't it? To sort of play on words. Encourage to opt out. So if you encourage, you can just sort of give somebody a little verbal. That's a good idea, mate. Coerce is something a bit more, isn't it? Definitely is, isn't it? Coerce is, go and do that. Um, use prohibited recruitment contact. Conduct, like on the back of the <laughs> contract. <laughs> there's, a little, there's, a, there's a little helping hand on the back. Do not join the pension scheme, please. It's too expensive for us. Um, and they're not allowed to give advice, of course. I mean, most employees won't. Um, and then there's the, there's the grey area between guidance. I mean, you guys might be asked for guidance. You can give guidance. But you've got to be careful about where guidance stops and advice begins. Um, so, employer options. Trust Nest, which I'm sure you've had some contact with or had some experience of so far. Uh, the People's Pension has been around a long time. Now Pension is the new guy on the block. Um, and GPP Group Personal Pension has been around for generations. Um, so, here's Nest. Just a couple, just a couple of eight memoirs on Nest. It's the government back, government provided fallback option. Nest, of all the providers, Nest is the only one that has to say yes. The others can choose and say no. These guys have to say yes. It's provided free of charge initially to the employer. The access to the product is not, not charged. Um, and there's no employer support provided by Nest. They're just not geared up for it. There is middleware. There's a middleware requirement the employers will have to avail themselves of with this, which does have a cost ticket. Um, it's a very, very basic contract. You can't transfer in and you can't transfer out. The government are talking about lifting that, but we just don't know when, it's just been discussed. Limited choice of investment funds, there are five, um, one of which is a Sharia fund, one is cash, so there are three mainframe funds, which would be cautious, sort of medium, then, then higher risk. Um, very, very basic. Charges are high for the first 10 years. Um, both in Plymouth and Exeter this week, uh, this has been a talking point because Quite a few accounts weren't aware of the, of the admin charge with Nest. So let's just cover it. The annual management charge, every pension in the land charges an annual fee. So the, the percentage of the fee is the, is, is, is the key bit. And this is key for the employees, the end users of the product. The employer is less concerned because it's not the charge he has to make. Um, but for, the, for employees, the end users of it, 0.3% is a very, very low annual management charge. It doesn't get any lower than that. 0.3%, extremely low. But, it's also got, in addition, a 1.8% contribution charge. Every time a contribution is paid, 1.8% is lost in admin fees. Now, it's going to be for the first 10 years or so. We think it might be 12, might be longer years, because Nest was created for pension auto enrolment, and the cost of creating itself have to be paid back, and that's what the admin charge is for. So it could be 10, 12, something number of years. It does make it much more expensive than it might seem to be. Um, if it had some services and you know, features and benefits within it which are quite compelling, then that would be much better. But very limited investment choices, you can't transfer in and out, and it's got a contribution limit as well of 3,600. Currently, that's due to rise to 4,400 per year. That would be okay for most people, but for some, some will find it restrictive. Um, people's been around for many years. Um, it was, it was kind, of, it kind of has a raison d'etre of low earners in high turnover industries, a bit of a revolving door scenario. Um, it's very basic not-for-profit scheme. It does have low charges, 0.4% annual management charge, very low. Again, very limited funds available, five of them, a bit like Nest. Um, more fl it's more flexible than Nest, you can transfer in or out of this one. Um, but again, there's no employer support offered. Again, same thing, people don't have the, the resources for it. Um, now pension, completely. I think they arrived here about three years ago, something like that. Um, run by Danish company ATP. The ATP run the Danish private and public sector pension. They run, they do the lot. 
I don't they've had pension compulsion for 40 years. So they're way, way ahead of us. Um, it's just got one fund. So this is simplicity personified, one fund. It is a fund of funds rather than one single entity, um, but it, it doesn't, there's not, there's not very really diversity available with this. Um, very low annual charge, 0.4, so it's really low. Um, no cost to the employer, again, no initial cost, but middleware implications after that. After that. Limited support, they offer a little bit of help right from the word go in terms of I think, getting on their website and getting keyed in. But after that, employers got to find their, fight their own battles. All of these, all the master trusts have help pages on their website, but um, there's no support structure with any of them provided by themselves. Okay, GPP, again, you know, this, is a, this has been around so long, I'm sure you'll be familiar with it. Provides a household name that you Scottish widows, Sylvia Rons, Aviva, uh, General, Standard Life, and so on and so forth. Um, very low annual charges compared to how it used to be. If you look at older pension contracts, some of them had annual management charges, they had a bit of a spread, they had a monthly admin fee, so there was a multiple charge contract in the old days. Not anymore, it's all one single monocharge contract, AMC, once per year. Um, and compared to what it used to be, it's far better. So we've now got a 0.75 charge cap coming in any minute now. Um, so no one's, everyone's going to be 0.75 or below, but use 0.75 as the guide. Remember, this is for the end users of the product. So employees pay the annual management charge out of their fund values every year. Um, and what, what, what's a significant change in, in addition to the falling cost of running one of these is a lot of them now got an investment process built in. So there's now, uh, which is subject to monthly review by the provider, so that never used to be there. So years ago you've been paying 1.3, 1.4% for your spread of funds in your pension and you get no help with it, no provider help. It's changed, changed hugely. Low charges and the investment process, real welcome additions to this. It can also feature salary exchange, of course, which can save employer costs. Um, salary exchange sometimes causes confusion and some headaches, and um, I've had a bit of a headache with one um, recently with salary exchange trying to fit in with the payroll structure. There were some technicalities with it, which was frustrating. Um, but the salary exchange is a real nice tax efficiency vehicle. All the GPPs we're putting in now have all got salary exchange on them. There's no reason not to have it. can't justify not putting it in. Um, there's an annual review service for this if the employer wants it. That's, a, and that's, a, that's something that can be included or not included at the employer's preference. There is a full, full support for this. The, the, the providers offer an implementation manager, which they hold the employer's hand. They've also got us to fall back on, so they've got two levels of support. Um, <clears throat> this one will accept transfers in, and you can transfer out any time. There's a large choice of investment funds as well for those who want to self-select. Most, most, most people will be happy with the investment process. It's pretty robust and it's subject to monthly review. The providers also will publish their findings online, so if you're interested, you can go and see why Portfolio 4 has changed its North American equity content. You can go and have a look and see why they've done that. Um, everyone okay with that so far, guys? Everyone wish they'd gone to the dentist? Okay, so new outlook for employers uh, to make you aware of. Um, since water enrolment came on, um, the providers got better at doing them. So a lot of the implementation lead times have now come down, which means there's less advisor time required. So the GPP solution is now available at less cost than it was a year ago, or maybe even eight, nine months ago. Um, so we are able to offer that less than before, which is obviously something that's really good news for employers. Um, would you all agree that the GPP is a, is a, is a, fairly, it's a, it's a solid entity? You've got, it's a solid entity, you can get paperwork through the post for it. The other's an electronic entity. Um, so we think this is more, seen more favourably by employees. They will recognise it and be able to sort of have an engagement with it. Um, as a further aid to keeping the costs acceptable for employers, salary exchange, of course, can give them NI rebates going forward. So that can take a sting at the initial costs. Okay. Providing a GPP has an initial cost implication for employers. It always will have, um, but the salary exchange will help. Um, there's a, there's a, for, for, for companies who are limited, there's corporation tax mitigation, which will take stay out as well. But I know, we, I know the hurdle is getting over the initial cost barrier, I'm very aware of that. And if employers say, like, I really want the GPP thing, but we can't afford your exorbitant fees, um, then Okay, we'll talk to them and say, well, all right, well, let's, we, we'll talk to you about spreading the fees over. You know, obviously very flexible ways of looking at it. Um, 
Another key change now is in the past we've dealt with cases that have gone master trust and we know that lots do. We said, actually, Mr. Employer, your situation is that you'll be better off with one of the master trusts, usually now pension is the simplest one. Um, and then left them to it, we're now saying, well, okay, we'll support you. We'll offer you support if you want it. Obviously, we're going to charge for the support, but leave the support there, and they're not left on their own. Um, the, the actual cost implications for supporting master trust isn't very high at all. Um, so that means that employers who are going the master trust route can still b benefit from professional help if they want it. Um, getting on with it, let's put all these out. I always have to, this cartoon, you know when, you, when you're in school, you always remember certain memories come to your mind, don't they, in school? Favourite teacher, teacher always avoided, good kids, not so good kids, all that kind of thing. There was a kid in my class, I was about nine years old, there was a kid in my class, pulled that face when he ran. Mm -hmm. That's exactly how he looked. Um, so, there's another one there somewhere. So, we saw short staging dates earlier on. Tick tock, tick tock, time, suddenly time goes by, we all say, don't we? Where's the, where's the year gone? Suddenly it's March, where's, where's, where's <coughs> January and February? So time ticks by really quickly, right under our noses. Um, and suddenly, you then get into a rush, staging's coming up, we haven't done anything about it, oh, panic. Um, it, the employee engagement thing, rolling out, this is an employee benefit. When we do these presentations to employees, we say, this is what your employer is doing for you. Okay, so it's a proper rollout, so they can recognise and engage with it. Um, with contributions of 1%, some, some employees are like, oh, that's only 1%. It's not that much of an issue. But when contributions are at 8%, we think many more will be curious as to how their, their pension's invested. Again, when I have a group of employees in the room, I ask them, how many of you regard your pension as an investment? And they, they, they usually don't know quite how to answer that, because most of them view it as some kind of amorphous thing they don't understand. It's written in Russian. So, um, but I should say, look, this is a, what a, a pension is, the definition of a pension is, it is an investment for your future well-being when you stop working. To be fair, our industry has been fantastic over the years at making things extremely complicated. Yeah, yeah. And there's, well, it's, it's still the case, you know, the, the FCA demands certain minimums. I'm sure you have, the same in your regulatory world, you have to do certain minimums um, that sometimes, you know, the employers you act for don't appreciate, have no idea why you're doing that. Same, well, we all got the same thing then. Um, but we're... Um, but contributions of 8%, I think more people will be then a bit more curious to say, well, where is this going? How is it performing? So, <coughs> with the GPP route, you can get access to the, to the provider's website, you can go and look up your page and see how things are performing. If you want to, a lot of people won't, but um, some will. Um, so, the engagement thing, say, well, actually, Mr. Employee, you can build this into your pay review. So, if I'm your boss again for a second, guys, this new pension thing that we're laying on for you, we're meeting the full cost of it. It will cost you a thing. Okay, you all have a little bit of, allowed a little bit of time in working hours to speak to the advisors about it. Um, so because it's a significant cost implication, we're going to include it in our pay review for this year. Just for this year. It's a very, very reasonable thing to say to employees. Um, as you know, guys, there are a lot of employers in a very long queue. Not as angels you were saying it yourselves, weren't you? There's a lot of employers are asking you, oh, what about this? What do we do about this? Yeah. And, we, and more and more of them. We saw the spikes. Um, the... Um, I don't think we'll be taking too much holiday time in June and July, actually, with, with, August, with an August spike coming up. Um, so whilst providers and advisors have capacity, it's a key thing um, that we as a practice only take so many schemes. Once we've got, once we've got to sort of capacity, we won't be able to do any more. Physically, there's a physical limit. Uh, the same is true of providers. We're already getting the GPP providers saying, no, we don't want to do that one. We won't offer terms. It's not appealing enough. So they're already starting to pick and choose. And as, as we get probably towards the end of this year, being here next, we, think that, we expect that to increase. Um, so we are encouraging people, don't leave it too late. Don't, don't leave it until, you know, oh, crikey, it's eight weeks to go to a staging. So it, it does happen, and we try and accommodate it. It's preferable not to have that. So summary, guys, be aware of staging spikes and penalties for lateness. Um, there's now some employer support for master trusts. Could we think some employers we think will, some will take this and some won't. Um, we think it'll, it'll be a bit of a boom for them to have a go-to supporter when they sort of start to struggle against the system and get questions they can't answer. Oh, our employees are asking this. Okay, well, we'll come in and talk to them. Um, 
So the GPP option now available at lower cost of the salary exchange, I <coughs> think we're expecting that to make it of more appeal to employers that would normally default to the master trust. So well, hang on, let's look at the GPP option in more detail. Some people are saying, yeah, I'd like that for my employees, but it's just the cost is an issue. So there are things we can do about that. Um, I mentioned earlier on we were in assembling about emailing your employers out to make them aware. I know some of you are probably doing that. Um, and I do have a format for it I can send you. That would be helpful to you to send out to your employers to say, please make sure you're sorting this out because I'm not. It, it says it slightly differently to that, but that's, what the, that's, that's the message it gives it. This is your responsibility to sort this. Please be aware of your staging day and do something about it. Okay, so I'm very happy to email that round, guys, if that would be useful to you. Um, Now, when it comes to talking to employers, we offer a first consultancy meeting with employers at our expense. So, the very least the employer will get will be an update on what they need to do, how, what their options are, what the cost implications are, and lots of sort of interesting little ditties we can share with them at the first meeting. It's up to them what they do after that. If they say, oh, I'm not, that's too, I don't want to do that, that's absolutely fine. But they can, get, they can basically have a brain-picking session, if you like, on us. Um, okay, ladies and gents. Pension drawing, vibrant, interesting subject, isn't it? Worth getting out of bed early for? <laughs> the only thing I would add to it is when we spoke to some of the um, companies um, in the group process of pension market, is that um, obviously cost is a major issue, clearly in all stale times now. We try and run a business and keep your head above water. This is the last thing employers need on their desk, to be realistic. Um, they set up middleware. If they're going to do the cheaper option, like Nest or something like that, if they're going to do that cheaper option, so they've got to set up middleware, which is going to be a cost to the company. The other thing is, is man hours, women hours, time to do the payroll, keep on control of it, take responsibility of the scheme. When we set schemes up with uh, the large insurers that the Scottish Life are all under in this world, they all put together <coughs> excuse me, a full, implement, full implementation team. So they'll engage with the deals of payroll. They'll handhold them through the whole process. They'll take care. Effectively, what they'll do is they'll take 99% of the responsibility away from the employer's payroll department. Because the pension regulator, as Annie's mentioned, fines. The fines for late staging are obviously severe. There are also fines for um, separate one-off breaches as well. So if they get something wrong, that can be a fine. Um, if the insurance company take control of it, they take pretty much all responsibility. The only responsibility that lies with the company is to make sure the payroll is set across correctly and on time. That's it. Once the payroll has been correctly set across the insurance company, if it goes wrong from that point onwards, it's off their desk and it's on the insurance company's desk, which is obviously a big relief because you know, anyone doesn't really want that to be over their head. So when you take into consideration the ongoing cost, because it's going to be 8% in 2018, so they're going to be paying those contributions anyway. But if they do engage with a, a large insurance company, then all those hours are saved because the insurance companies and the millions of pounds they've invested in software, they're picking all that time and arduous tasks up. If the company stays as it is, then they're going to be paying their 3%, and they're going to be paying the cost of the middleware, and they're going to be dealing with the hours on dealing with the payroll. So it will become more expensive when it comes to 2018. It's just something people don't think about. Um, before we go on to the next session, we're about to do pension access with you. Um, obviously, the new freedom's coming in April. There's been an awful lot of attention in the press already about that. And our phone's been ringing, so people are getting quite excited. Ooh! <clears throat> didn't help when Steve Webb talked about buying Lamborghinis. That sort of got people's attention, didn't it? Um, could be, a Lamborghini could be a good investment, actually. Um, any questions on auto enrollment, guys? Can you give us an indication of what the costs to the employer are from yourselves? Um, I, 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 I'll give you an example. I'm dealing with a firm at the moment, um, and the, their, there's a number of partners have to agree on it, and there's a bit of difference of opinion how they should, how should go with it. They want, they want a GPP solution, they're quite a high-end employer, I would describe them as, uh, and you know, with a healthy payroll. Um, the, initially we were talking about initial fees for 48 employees of 14, 1, 000, 1, 4, 000 pounds, 14 pounds initial costs to do all the employee comms, all the on-site work, all the interaction and so on, get the scheme up and running, and, and we, do the, we do the registration with TPR, so we provide all that. Um, and in, under the, the, the cost implication. Um, with the new access, now that we've got a, a smoother transition access into the GPP route, we can, that cost would come down from 14 to 9. So it's made a substantial difference to that employer having the smoother route. Depends on the size of the product, Steve. If it's, I mean, uh, 10 employees, 
um, oh, three, three and a half, four, that kind of territory. But again, depending on what the employer, how much the work the employer wants us to do, they say, just go and do it. Yeah, yeah, just take it off my desk. Then we'll pick it up, pick up the mantle, get the pay, get their uh, payroll spreadsheet, and take it from there. Everyone gets a letter, go and do a presentation, um, agree the start dates and so on, get all the things set up behind the scenes, and then go in and see everyone one to one. So that's what that cost does. So can I just say, so if you're saying you can use that route, that the middleware is included? Yes, it is. The, 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 the pension provider provides a is software there, interaction. Is there a maximum contribution that they minimum contribution that they thank, thank you for saying that. I, I, I mentioned it. Typically, what again turns, <coughs> turns employers slightly away from the GPP option is to get the GPP providers interested, we need to offer contribution levels higher than 1%. So we need normally need to say three. I normally say, look, three and three is where this needs to be. We can get cases through two and two, um, and but it's more difficult. It's, it's, more, it's more tricky. Um, and then particularly if we start using band earnings, band earnings can then obviously lowers the amount of, of contribution by its very definition. So if we're using clean whole, if we're using clean or whole earnings, then it's easy to get the get the GPP provider's attention. If it's lower levels. They're tending not to want to do it because they're, they're saying. Well, the, the case I was, the Steve, I responded to Steve's question about the, the pension provider said this scheme would be running for 18 years before we break even. 18 years. That's a three and three percent. So you can kind of understand it then why they're saying, well, we do want to play below that level. You can understand it. So for a GPP, think three and three, but it can be a bit lower. It can be. But three and three is really the, the, the place to be. Um, and it's, the only, I suppose, softening of that is that the employers, you have to do 3% in a minute anyway. You've been doing 3% in a few years anyway. So if you do it, and again, if you engage with your employees, and when I do the presentation, say, your employer could do something much, much less expensive than this, they could engage at 1%, they're actually engaging at 2 or 3% right away, it's QDOS. And we actually make that point very, you know, quite markedly in presentations like this. Your employer is doing this for you and they're paying more than they have to. It's true, isn't it? It's true. Kudos is kudos, kudos is due. Absolutely. Can I just ask on, on the very, very small sort of husband and wife in companies, if it's more than one relevant person, there has to be water in the wrong. So yes. That yes. I've got a few situations in the last where you've got either a husband employing a wife at the LEL and therefore they are under the ten thousand yeah. pound, they say they are gonna opt out. Do they actually have to register for a scheme, have a scheme, then opt out? Yeah. Pretty they, good. they they, they yeah. have no way around that. No, not the moment, John. Not at the moment. My understanding is that I haven't had to, I haven't had, I actually had to deal with one of those yet. Because I'm expecting that happening in 17 or for those yeah, kind of no, scenarios. I'm already having these questions. What yeah. do, I, do I have to do this? My understanding currently is that they've still got to go through the, 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 the pain barrier, okay, yeah. and put the thing on and just say, well, okay, we've got one member and the member's opted out. That's fine. But you're still going to have the, the, the framework for it. Yeah, because then don't forget, three years later, that member will be automatically enrolled again and has to opt out yeah. three years later. Mm -hmm. So then it does have to set up a framework. Yeah, you do have to put the framework in place. Yeah. Yeah. And similarly, on a case where I've got clients where it's two, you know, limited companies, two directors, yeah. one is paying into a, a, a current employer scheme, which is a, does not permit a second member. So the wife is always, always already on the payroll, so he is already paying, contribute, the company is already paying sufficient to contribute with him, yeah. but because she's on the payroll and she doesn't want to contribute, will there have to be set up an auto enroll scheme in addition because the, the current company scheme is not auto enroll compliant? Well, what I would say there is, change, just, let's, let's just see, look at the current scheme and change it. Let's, let's see what that is, yeah. what's the barrier to, to the lady joining the scheme, and let's remove the barrier, either lift it and take it to a different place, yeah. uh, or see if we can get, get some new terms negotiated. It's crazy. I, I, it is crazy. Uh, to, to, for somebody to be disadvantaged like that. Because I've had three in the last sort of three months where they said they've gone to the pension company and said no, the spouse cannot join the scheme. It's probably that, that, that's probably written written back in Noah's well, time that scheme, yeah. wasn't it? It was oh, probably yeah. It's probably twenty year old. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. but that, and the pension providers just said no. Yeah, no listen, members. They're bound by an old, uh, uh, archaic spider laden mm -hmm. contract there. 
Um, it might be some like a guaranteed annuity or something. Like could have a guaranteed annuity yeah. on this. Might be my best guess. <coughs> Probably they would yeah. have to do it again, auto enrol, and then opt out. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, that would yeah. be the sort of that would be the kind of the negative yeah. aspect of that. Um, what I would love to do is change it, lift the barriers, get get all those restrictions taken away. It's not what it's supposed to be about. The whole purpose of this, isn't it, to get people with enough money in their pot to kind of put their own big beans on the table, yeah. rather than say to the state, I'm skint, can you help me please? Yeah. We're all living longer, the government can't afford to feed us guys, can they? They're all saying that. Yeah. Um, okay, mindful of the time, I'll um, pass you to the Honourable Mr Legasic. Um, but really topical stuff coming up on access freedoms.